Now the Uganda Women Parliamentary Association, WOPA, fronting a bill that seeks, among others, consolidate laws relating to sexual offences and combat sexual violence, among others. The Sexual Offences Bill 2015, tabled by WOPA's chairperson, Honorable Monica Moding, also provides for the punishment of perpetrators of sexual offences. It further provides for procedure and evidential requirements during the trial of sexual offences. Some of the key highlights of the bill are, one, it legislates against marital rape and provides that a spouse may refuse consent to a sexual act on grounds of poor health or mental condition, evidence or reasonable fear that engaging in a sexual act is likely to cause injury or harm to the spouse refusing to perform a sexual act. Number two, it addresses sexual assault as well as sexual harassment. And the proposed law proposes that there should be a jail term for up to 10 years for prostitutes and their clients and prohibits sex against the order of nature. And joining me in studio is the Kumi Woman Member of Parliament and Chairperson of the Uganda Women Parliamentary Association, Honorable Monica Amodin. Welcome to Newsnight. Thank you, sir. Some of the the, you know, reading through the, the, the bill, it looks like this is the same thing that is in the penal code. It seems to be a duplication of laws. What is the difference here? Um, the perception that people have is that it is a duplication, but as you read the object or the purpose of the law mm. that we are proposing is to bring together all other enacted laws into one book of mm. law so that those who practice in that area find it easier to refer. So that is one of the objectives. But also we are introducing amendments to existing enactments and also bringing on board new areas because we have noted the acts of sexual offenses are still perverse mm. in our community, mm. quite uh, very, very large in the extent. And so we need to find other solutions that can contribute to combating sexual violence in our homes, in our communities, in our, in our institutions. Some of these solutions that you have suggested, especially when it comes to marital rape, this, is, this was one of the controversial issues even back in 2002. How, what have you found out while consulting? Well, this is still an issue that is still pending in our legislation. Uh, it was still part in the, in the marriage and the proposed family law. Mm -hmm. And because it's still a, a sexual issue, we still feel that Parliament should debate it and legislate upon it. And so everything that concerns sexual offences, we are consolidating it in this proposal mm -hmm. and uh, requiring that Parliament considers the proposal and debates. And the public also considers the legislation and also gives us their proposed views. Mm -hmm. But we want to assure the public there are very many uh, progressive uh, proposals we have included which are meant to enhance the protection of our girls, especially the girl child, because the statistics we have mm. indicate that 95% of uh, girls as they grow up, all mm. of us as mm. women as we grow up, mm. we are vulnerable to sexual violence, whatever we are. And so that statistic is, uh, is implicating that almost all women face some, f uh, face some form of uh, sexual violence in their lives. Mm -hmm. Because as you see, sexual harassment, that one happens in the public. When you go to the marketplace, somebody is saying something sexual to you, unwanted advances. So but these are, honorable, these are things that are still in the penal code. What, you, you talked about progressive, yes. some of the, prog what exactly are you introducing? That would be very different from what is in the penal code. For example, we want to prohibit or to punish people who, um, in persons in authority, persons in trust of a child, that is particularly referring to people like teachers, mm -hmm. people that are guardians, parents. You're a person in trust and in custody of somebody in trust of a, a young child, and then you defile that person. It means that you have defiled their trust, and that one we are, uh, we are proposing a punishment for such a person. For example, we want to cancel certificates of professionals. Mm -hmm. If you're living with a child, you're a parent, and you're a professional of some sort, you should lose a job. You should lose your certificate of practice. If you're a teacher, if you are a police, if you're a person who, a person comes who is a victim and comes in contact with you, and you instead uh, engage that person in a sexual uh, manner, and therefore we are proposing that also such mm -hmm. kind of people can lose their uh, uh, certificates. We are proposing a database, a database to keep information of all 
defilers in the past such that when such a person goes to look for another job somewhere he should confess or she should confess that i have a past <laughs> if you I, do I, not I, in a place where documentation is, you know, very hard to find, even when you go uh, to register for some of these official documents, it's, it's a tall order. You think this is going to work? It is not a tall order. We are proposing that this will be a database where DNAs will be kept. In modern countries, it happens. In Uganda, it can happen. Our laboratory can be accessed with that uh, kind of information. But the minister will provide regulations on where that kind of database can be housed. But it is mm. progressive. It will help in, in these issues. We are also, of course, enhancing procedural matters hearing these cases in camera, protecting yes. the identity of the child, procedural requirements as well as evidential requirements. Because what is in the law is saying that a child's testimony or evidence cannot be used to prosecute uh, a culprit. And therefore, we are saying that uh, it should be uh, sufficient. It shouldn't be corroborated as the language of the law says. And mm -hmm. so a child's testimony, if in the view of court, it is sufficient. It can be used to prosecute. Right. Uh, we are also uh, prohibiting forced marriage, early marriages, and uh, children who get pregnant in school and mm -hmm. you are chased out. We are prohibiting that in the law. And also those who get pregnant, we want to be able to bring them back in the education system, reintegrate them. And so if an institution chases such a child out of the, uh, the school learning institution, we want to prohibit that as well. Mm -hmm. Quite a number of other progressive uh, proposals, over 15 of the new ones, and also bringing on board, as you're saying, the old amendment, because we are bringing them in one house. Uh -huh. So whatever was in the penal code, we are repealing. Uh, again, and, uh, I, 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 I insist on the penal code and the Children's Act, which yes. protect. Do, shouldn't you be thinking of strengthening those particular instruments? Precisely. Instead of bringing something that looks different? No, no, no. Precisely what we are doing is to bring, repeal what is in other scattered laws. Because on sexual offenses, there are more than six or seven legislations talking about different areas. So that is a, a tall order for courts of law to search here and there. So we are consolidating them, but also improving some provisions, like mm -hmm. on the rape that you have alluded to, aggravated yes. defilement, we are improving on them. We are improving so many other areas because of the fact that we have noted sexual violence is not reducing. Instead, it is increasing. increasing. So we need to tighten, we need to prevent, we need to prohibit with the tighter offenses. Honorable, 30 seconds. We have the issue of culture. Culture is progressively changing, but in the line of our society's perception of sexual matters, it right. is slowly changing. And so we want to work hand in hand with the law, but also sensitization, which is continuous of our people to appreciate that uh, these issues are gross and they are bad. They affect mm -hmm. the health, the development of our women and our country, girls and boys inclusive. Honorable Monica Martin, yes. thank you so much for thank joining us. Thank you so us much, Brian, for inviting me. And that's Newsnight. Mm -hmm.